From the very beginning, every man and every woman, from Adam and Eve onwards, every person placed their faith in God Almighty has been intrigued with the promises of salvation. It was mystery, a secret. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. There are a lot of subjects that God has not given any information or much information regarding. God is strangely silent about a lot of things. For instance, life on this planet before he created mankind. The Bible is a book of mysteries. And over time, God reveals the mysteries and journey through the pages of the Bible. Now, today, we are going to talk a lot about a mystery that the Old Testament prophets struggled to understand. Isaiah the prophet, Jeremiah the prophet, Ezekiel the prophet, and so on, all wondered about this mystery. The Old Testament prophets wrote under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. But that does not mean they always fully understood the message God gave to them. Not only did the prophets struggle to understand this, but even the angels, even God's holy angels didn't understand this mystery. Even the angels are at the mercy of God. The mystery is the mystery of salvation. Although this mystery has been revealed to us, it was incomprehensive for the heroes of faith who lived and died before the cross. They saw it afar off, but they do not understand how it was going to find reality. We see this in 1 Peter 1 verse 10 to 12, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The mystery of salvation was long ago revealed to the prophets of old, they had great delight in it, and they waited earnestly for the fulfillment of the vision. They inquired, and made diligent search, perhaps they might know the time ordained for the entire human race to be saved. But they all waited, searched, and inquired without knowing what actually the package of salvation would look like. Hebrews 11 verse 39 and 40 says about those saints of old and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise god having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect although all these prophets of old did great things in their days and they eager earnestly for the coming of their savior they never saw him. As we read 1 Peter 1 verse 10 to 12 and in other texts that the inspired prophets recorded many things pertaining to the who and the when of the coming of the Messiah Savior. There were several prophets in the scriptures who prophesied about the birth of Christ and the restoration of the people of God. Some of these prophets explicitly stated what the ministry of Christ would be when he comes and the purpose to which we will come. More so, they peeped into the farthest future to prophesy about the second coming of Christ. Isn't it amazing that Enoch, who was the seventh generation from Adam, could see so far into the future that he prophesied how that the Lord would return with ten thousands of his angels in Jude chapter 1 verses 13 through 14? Although the prophets prophesied about the salvation of humanity, they do not have the full understanding of the plan of God for the entire universe. They all prophesied according to the measure of grace and revelation they were granted. Isaiah prophesied thus in Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 through 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah gave an apt description of the ministry of the Messiah and how it will transcend time. However, he doesn't know when or how the prophecy would be fulfilled. Therefore, he ascribed the fulfillment of the prophecy to the zeal of the Lord of hosts. The message of the prophets were typically a message concerning the need to repent, punishment that would follow from non-repentance, and a coming restoration. Prophet Malachi stated the great consequence of not repenting from sin in the day of the Lord in Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, which reads, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The prophecy of Malachi extended to the second coming of Christ to show that there is an eternal punishment for those who turn deaf ears to the message of salvation. The last expression in this passage is very interesting to me. Even angels long to look into these things. The mystery of salvation was so significant to the point that even angels wondered about it. The Bible even says that the angels desired to look into it. I want to read to you a quote from Calvary Bible Church senior pastor Dr. David Harrell. He explains so well, stating, Imagine the encouragement this world would have been to beleaguered saints of that day, and even to us today suffering saints who now can understand that they personally had received this message of salvation that not only captivated the hearts and the attentions of the old testament prophets and excited the passion of new testament preachers but it was also a revelation that literally astonishes the angels it says here in the text that it is Things into which angels long to look. Long, in the original language, means to have a consuming passion, a strong desire, an overwhelming impulse. To look is a term that means to literally stop and stoop down and stretch your head forward to look very carefully at something that you believe to be of great importance. The grammar indicates that this is a continual fascination that the angels have. It is not something that happened long ago and now it's kind of ho-hum. They continue to be utterly fascinated with a message of salvation. What do you think they are looking at? I can only imagine some of the things. I am sure they have an undying curiosity to behold fallen creatures who bear the image of God, the one they know so intimately. I think of it like a parent or grandparent when they go to the hospital when a baby is born. What do we do? We go into that room where those babies are lying and we look through the glass. We peer into the face of that child to see whose resemblance that baby might have. Oh, it looks like daddy, or whoever. I am sure the angels do the same thing. They look at us and they say, My, I see a little resemblance of the father here. I see the image of God being born out a little. Look over there, look over here. They are fascinated with this, trying to find a glimpse of the character of the triune God being manifested in our sinful state. No doubt they are intrigued with the undeserved mercy and grace of God upon creatures they themselves have been discharged to minister unto. I am sure they find that a fascination. They undoubtedly care for us with an intense care. 
I am sure they are often bewildered at our rebellion against such a holy and righteous and loving God. Today, not only do we have access to the holiest of all through the blood of Jesus, we have also been made to receive and to become partakers of the Holy Spirit who bears witness in our hearts that we are truly the sons and daughters of God. This is the experience that men of old never had. They were only moved at certain times by the Holy Spirit to do the supernatural. But the Holy Spirit did not reside in them like He resides in us today. Looking at the great grace that is made available to us in our dispensation, we must ensure to take our salvation seriously and contend for it until we are perfected in heaven.